Hi, this is The Peaceful Prepper with another segment of my emergency food storage series. Today I want to show you what I'm doing in the next layer of my emergency food storage, the short-term food supply. For me, this is really the core of my emergency food because it's stocked with food that can be eaten easily under difficult circumstances. The next layer, the medium-term food consists of one to three months supply of foods that I would be buying, preparing, and eating under normal circumstances. And once that's in place, my next food-related project is going to be exploring food production options rather than the long-term food storage. Living in my apartment under extreme circumstances for six months or a year doesn't seem feasible to me, so I'm not focusing on storing food here that could feed me for a year or more. Here's a review of the guidelines I laid out in my first emergency food video. My two-week supply of emergency food consists of food that doesn't need refrigeration, cooking, or even boiling water, except for the mountain oven, which is a flameless heater that I've done a video on and will link it below. I want to be able to pack at least some of it in my car if I need to bug out, so I store it distributed in several plastic tubs that I can carry down the three flights of stairs to my car. I'll check the food every six months and rotate as needed into my regular pantry or donate to a food bank. Although a general rule of food storage is to store what you already eat, in order to meet the guidelines I've set for this layer, I've broken that rule. A lot of the items are things I like well enough, but wouldn't usually buy for my everyday eating, like mountain house meals and single serving sizes so they won't spoil without refrigeration after they're opened. Because of the types of food, I've also spent more money on this food than I would normally spend on two weeks of food. These three boxes are the extended shelf life part of my food storage. It's mostly mountain house products that have, now they're saying up to a 15 year shelf life. Some of them are number 10 cans or number two and a half cans, which are supposed to have, I think a 25 or 30 year shelf life. So this gives me some food that even if human error causes all the other food to go bad, and by human error I mean I mess up my whole system and forget to fix anything, rotate things, who knows? Or part of maybe something happens in my kitchen, this I don't keep in my kitchen, so it's in a different part of the apartment. And I'll show you briefly what's in each. The top one each one has the mountain oven that I showed in an earlier video. This one, I sort of distributed the, the pads that heat the oven. This actually just has one in it and a, a, boil, a bag that can be boiled and none of the entrees in here, but it's in every one. There's one in each of them. And each of them has a bag with paper towels and other Ziploc bags garbage bag, a long spoon, etc. Each of them has a can opener. This has some additional silverware, which isn't needed for what's in here particularly. I also have a jar of honey, which as you know, has a very long or indefinite shelf life. Then I have three large number 10 cans of freeze dried fruit. I have strawberries, blackberries, and apple slices. And I really like freeze-dried fruit as a snack. I'm happy to, to just eat that straight and in fact have to put, I wouldn't open these big cans, but the small ones, when I first started collecting them, I'd end up eating. So I put them, put them away. And I have been maybe for two or even three years just looking for sales and whenever I saw something like this for a really good price, I picked it up. And then I also have a number 10 can of pilot bread or crackers. And I think there are 50 fairly large pieces in here because um, bread and, and sort of regular grocery store crackers don't really have, bread obviously doesn't have a long shelf life, but it, it gives me that backup. The other two boxes are almost identical. So I'll just show one to you. It has the same bag with garbage bags and napkins. It has a couple of small cans. These are apple slices. Oh, I guess it's a different brand. This is Providential, Provident Pantry. 
some raspberries. Whoop. Another mountain oven, and I put seven of the heating pads in this, and then there's seven entrees. The other thing that's in each of these boxes is a six pack of canned water. And this is emergency drinking water. Not sure what the brand is. It just says emergency drinking water. Each can is 22 ounces. Hold it, if you can see. There's six of them, so I have a little over a little over a gallon in each can. And that again means that even if I don't rotate my water, I have some drinking water that doesn't need to be purified. Or if I just grab one of these boxes and put it in my car, I have a week's worth of entrees and a day or two's worth of water. So that is part of my food storage. This is the rest of my emergency food storage. And again, I have things distributed so there's a little bit of everything in each container just in case I'm only going to have a chance to grab one and I won't be staying here. So I'm just going to open up one of these and show you what's in so it. So in this box, I have three sea roasted seaweed snacks, which I love. These are, um, they give you some really good trace minerals. I think they're really tasty. Um, seaweed's very healthy for you if you like it. I have a couple of things of one turkey jerky, one buffalo jerky, or beef jerky, I'm not sure which. I have a four pack of Rice Dream shelf stable rice milk, a jar of peanut butter, some chocolate pudding, very important, some single, and you'll see I have a lot of single serving things because once I open it, it's not going to be refrigerated, obviously, so I need to be able to finish it um, in that sitting or that day. Some single serving applesauce, some raisins, or I guess these are dried cranberries, a bunch of, um, what are they called, Benefiber, which I, you also saw in my bug out bag. That's the rest of the box. I have a can opener. I have one in each of the boxes again. This is the good one. The rest of them are just cheap, usable ones. This is the kind that cuts, I'm obviously not going to cut it, but it cuts around the can rather than, rather than cutting here. It cuts here. It leaves a smoother edge. There aren't as many sharp edges. And if you want to use the can for a glass or a pot or something like that, this is a good way to cut it. Um, it'll be a little bit safer. It won't take as much to, to smooth out the edges. And it leaves you with something that's not sharp and jagged where you could cut yourself. So the can opener. I have six cans of corn and green beans because those are the canned vegetables that I like. Some fruit spread. A little can of pineapple chunks another thing of jerky, a big thing of cereal, and that's what I'd use the rice stream for. I have a six pack of pineapple juice. I really like pineapple. It also, it, there are a lot of healthy things, but it's um, good for inflammation, and at least I was told sort of arthritis in my fingers are just a tiny bit arthritic, so the more I have, the better. And then I have a six pack of V8 juice. So trying to have a mixture of some healthy grains, fruits and vegetables. Um, yeah, so, so roughly that same type of food is in each of these containers. These six containers, which when I put everything together, I've been collecting some of this food and rotating some for a while, but it was never all organized in one place before I started doing this project, and it seems like a lot. But this is my two-week supply of food, and it's a very generous two weeks for one person. I'll show you my spreadsheet where I keep track of the calories and some of the nutrients. So I feel like, you know, I would eat very well for two weeks, and if I needed to give some food away or someone was with me, it's certainly doable. To, um, to either for me to last longer than two weeks or to share it with someone for two weeks. 
And the next challenge in an apartment is to figure out where to store all of this. So that's what I'll be showing you next. My two-week food storage is based on the assumptions or is designed for one person with the assumption that there's no refrigeration and I don't have any ability to cook, including boiling water. But those aren't the assumptions that make the most sense for a lot of people. If you have more people in your household, the concern about food going bad once it's opened is going to be different than if you live alone. So you have the possibility of making some different kinds of food. For instance, taking a few cans of beans and making a bean salad. If you have a reliable way to boil water, you have a lot of options in terms of pre-prepared foods that just require some boiling water, or even better to prepare your own dehydrated meals that are likely to be healthier and a lot more interesting. This is the spreadsheet I'm using to keep track of my two weeks of food and the expiration dates to make it easier to rotate. So I have the list of all the foods with the number of servings per box or can in the quantity, and I'm using the same nutritional values, um, paying attention to the same nutritional values as I did with my Bob food, which are calories, protein, and fiber. Then I have the expiration date and the rotation date, and I'm planning on rotating the food every six months, or checking on it every six months in September and March, so the rotation date is whichever of those dates is before the expiration date. I didn't film it, but let me see if I can move forward because I don't know how much you can read here. But I also have a bag that has um, paper plates, bowls, silverware, cups, napkins, and paper towels that are available for me in an emergency if either I'm low on water or want to save water for whatever reason and I don't, I'm in the house but I don't want to be washing dishes, I can use disposable dishes. Or if I'm bugging out and I have time to load up my car with any supplies, I could just throw that bag in there and I have disposable dishes to take with me. If you saw my Bob video, what that was very simple to to total the nutritional values per day because I knew exactly which foods were designated for each day. Each day was pretty much the same, so I could just add them up. In this case, it's a little less straightforward because you don't know what you're going to eat any particular day. So what I did was I totaled all of the calories by multiplying the quantity times the servings times the calories of the protein or the fiber. So for instance, in all of the food that I have listed, there are 39,030 calories. And then I divided it by 14, which gave me the average per day that if one person was eating all of this for 14 days, they would have 2,788 calories, 101 grams of protein, and 58 grams of fiber. And I feel like that's a very generous amount of food. So I feel like there's some flexibility there. If there are two people eating it, it could let, you know, last longer than a week. This, the food for one person could last longer than two days. It could be shared. It's a generous enough amount that there's a lot of flexibility there. Thanks so much for watching. Be safe, be happy.